Situated on the site of a former coconut plantation, the U.S.-operated Kunkungan Bay Resort offers remote seclusion, a staff of 80, well-appointed cottages, and good food. The diving officer here, Larry Smith, is reputed to be the best dive guide in Indonesia. People come here all the time and they've uh, got thousands of dives, they've, they've seen lots of animals, they, they've seen the big action, and they come here and they're totally impressed, totally amazed at the different types of animals that they see. Uh, one of the biggest things is seahorses. Uh, everybody knows what seahorses are, and, uh, but you rarely ever see them. Here we have a couple of dive sites that we can go to and consistently find seahorses. Seahorses are found in Kunkungan Bay near the resort, but they are so small you need a magnifying glass to see them. These are the so-called pygmy seahorses. They live on a certain type of sea fan where they blend in with ingenious camouflage. Of course, the hardest one to find is the first one. Then there's other things that are not as well known as seahorses, like uh, an animal called an uh, ornate ghost pipefish. And uh, certain times of the year, we see these things regularly, and uh, they are territorial, and there's places we can go repeatedly and uh, consistently show people these things. They're extremely beautiful, extremely rare, and uh, they just get a, a, the same thrill out of seeing these things that they would get out of seeing manta rays or dolphins or whale sharks or something like that. But why all the bizarre critters? Where did they come from? One reason we feel like there's such a high concentration of them here is because of the currents that uh, constantly provide the nutrients that's brought in with the, the rising tide and the falling tide. Uh, these nutrients that are brought in just supports a, a big variety of these uh, scorpion fish and lionfish and devilfish. Uh, but on the outside, you know, you'll see them occasionally. But here, every dive you make, you're going you're gonna to see them. In one particular dive site on one of our shipwrecks, uh, I can guarantee people will see more lionfish and bigger lionfish than they've ever seen anywhere in their life. Because the people that come here, they all come back, no matter who they are or where they've been, they come back and say, man, I've never seen so many lionfish or bigger lionfish than that's on that shipwreck. We recently found at this place called Air Prong um, more and more fish called a stargazer. I had only seen a couple of stargazers before in my whole life before I came to Limbe, and I found one at a place over here uh, called Magic Rock. Found the stargazers there. That's the first one that I found here in the Straits. And then at Air Perang, uh, on night dives that we're starting to do there now, uh, divers are coming back with uh, more and more reports of seeing stargazers. They're probably there all the time, but they're so well camouflaged under the sand that uh, you just go right by them, and they stay buried, they don't come out. But at nighttime, apparently, they come out to feed, and they'll be on top and you get a really good look at an extremely rare and hard to find fish. These fishes are highly adept at burying themselves in the sandy bottom. They do this by swimming movements and a sinuous motions of the body while working their jaws. When buried, their fringed lips help keep sand out of their mouths. The experts that come here tell us that this is some of the oldest oceans in the world and that the animals that live here have had longer time to develop their toxins and also develop their camouflage. And uh, we have an abundance of those kind of animals here like lionfish, scorpionfish, uh, stonefish, uh, it's a type of fish that mimics a leaf called a cockatoo wasp fish. That's a type of a scorpion fish. And there's another one just called a common leaf fish that also has toxin in its spines. And these animals, they're like the experts say, have had longer than any other animals in the oceans to develop these toxins and to develop their techniques of camouflage. And so when we give the briefing uh, for diving here in Limbay, we tell everybody to really be careful uh, to maintain their buoyancy about uh, three feet away from the bottom and to be particularly careful with their hand movement, to not be moving their hands around to balance themselves with their buoyancy in the water because they can accidentally put their hand somewhere and uh, the bottom is literally, you know, covered with these uh, animals that can sting. So we do have to be very careful. But these animals that can sting, they make also excellent uh, photographic subjects. And some of them's movement, like the devilfish. You know, they kind of crawl on the bottom and walk on the bottom and makes really good for uh, photography here. Well, it has a really ugly face and 
and uh, beady eyes and big sharp spikes. And everywhere I had been before, thousands and thousands of knives, I had never seen one before. I came uh, to Indonesia and I saw my first one at actually a place called uh, Ambon. I'd seen one there and I came here and just about uh, every day uh, there's reports of people spotting and photographing uh, devilfish. Uh, one fish expert was here. Uh, he had uh, been everywhere, seen everything, but he had never photographed an anemicus before. And uh, at times he was seen five on a single dive. So anemicus are, are almost to the point of being common.